Behind me is the Remington Ammunition Plant. It's down here in Arkansas, and every piece of Remington ammunition that you buy at the store is made right here. This plant has different sections that are dedicated to shotgun ammo production, center fire, pistol, and rim fire. So we're going to be taking a look at the shot shell production today and seeing how your shotgun shells get made. Uh, my name is Ronnie Evans. I've worked at the company for soon be um, 29 years, be 30 years next year. I'm the product line manager for our shot shell division of Remington. Well, you can't start a shotgun shell without a primer, even though you didn't see that, but the shot shell primer is manufactured on the south end of the property. Our lead is brought in in 60 pound ingots, and we load them on an elevator, and they go up this conveyor, or it's actually a chain, and carry it all the way to the top of the 11th floor, and it goes into a big pot. And that big pot is extremely hot, and it melts this lead into liquid. Once it comes out, it will go through a tube and feed over the top of a screen. That screen has holes in it for particular sizes, right? So the smaller the hole, the smaller the shot, the larger the hole, the larger the shot. We allow the shot to drop just like raindrops and it forms just like a raindrop. As it forms, it gets very round. As it falls, hits water, cools. Then we take it back up and we run it over tables to grade it out. When we're making seven and a half shot, we may get some eight in it, right? So we grade it out and pull those shot sizes apart to ensure that we're giving our customer exactly what they're looking for. But once that's done there, it goes into tanks and then that's when it goes up to the loading area to be dropped into shells. Caps, uh, some people call them heads. We call them caps here. Um, all that material comes in in rolls of brass plated steel, nylon plated steel, or solid brass, depending on the type of application we're using. Solid brass goes in all of our target loads, like our STS nitro sporting clays, and also our nitro 27 gets a solid brass cap. Everything else gets steel plated of some type. It's a steel substrate with either a brass or a nylon plating on it. While that's going on, just around the corner from that, you saw the extruders, where we're actually making the plastic hull. We have two different types of holes we manufacture here. One is a one-piece unibody hull, and then we also have what we call our large volume. The one-piece unibody hull is the hull that goes into like dove loads, target loads, lighter loads, so we don't have as much powder and much of a payload. So because the hull is tapered on the inside, the volume's not there for large payloads and large amounts of powder. Our large volume, it's a smaller tube that's stretched out into a long tube, has corrugation along the sides. It's sawed into lengths of two and three quarter, three inch and three and a half inch. Once those are manufactured, they're washed and uh, tested, or I say tested, inspected to make sure there's not any inclusions or anything in them. Then they go into the AHMP, which is a symbol head and prime. There they take the primer that was manufactured earlier, they take the cap, whether it be a low base, high base, depending on what they're doing, and the body that course corresponds with what you're trying to build. If it's a three piece, they have the body, the cap, the primer, and a base wad. If it's the uh, standard, um, like a gun club or an STS, you just have one body, one cap, one primer. That's all seated in the h &P. Once it's manufactured from h &P, it moves across over to the uh, uh, printer where we print the load lines and names on the shell. Once that's printed there, it's a, it has an ultraviolet ink that's printed on those, so it's changed per load. Uh, then it goes above uh, our loading operation, which is on our third floor. Uh, up there, we've, we have uh, three floors in our shot shell manufacturing. You have the third floor, which would be shot, powder, wads, uh, bodies, and everything going, feeding the loaders on the next floor down, the second floor. Second floor is where you have your loaders are actually put all those constituents together to manufacture a loaded shot shell round. From there, they're taking uh, tests are done throughout the day for velocity, pressure, uh, check accuracy on slugs. Uh, we check all that, we check shot weight, we check powder weight to ensure that the product is meeting our standards throughout the process. Once it's loaded there, it goes through a more tubes through the floor and goes to the packing area below. Probably 75% of it does that. There's 80% of it that goes in the barrel that we actually hand pack because we don't have a loader, we don't have a packer set to that loader. But 75% of it goes to a loader, which is loaded downstairs, goes into a box. Uh, people actually take the box and put it in cases, run it through tape machines and place it on pallets. At that point, it's ready to go to our distribution center and, and go out to the public throughout the United States and Canada, whoever else, right? So. 
That's it. Well, I want to give a huge shout out to Remington for making this trip possible. It was really cool getting to see how all the shot shells were made and even the rim fire and center fire stuff. That's really cool too. So I just want to give you guys a condensed little video showing you how shot shells are made. If you enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. And uh, drop a comment down below letting me know what you guys are going to be shooting this season. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.